Hi, this is Anne with Graphic Design How To, and today I'm going to show you how to redraw a logo from a very low res JPEG or PNG image. And this is something that happened to me all the time when I worked at a, a digital printing company and then later a t-shirt company where the clients would give us these really low res files of their own logos. That was the best file they had. I think the reason this happens is because clients don't really understand what a vector logo is. And so they can't even preview it on their system. They think it's just junk and they throw it away or they misplace it. So anyway, part of my job at both of those companies was to redraw these logos with the Illustrator tools. And how you go about that is really going to depend on the type of logo, but um, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you three different logos and how I would go about tracing them and getting them into vector format. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm here in Illustrator and I'm just gonna come over here to create new. I'll come up to the top to print and then I'll choose letter and create. Now, the logos I'm going to redraw in this tutorial are from Vectezy.com. And these are the three we're going to be drawing today. This eye, the camera, and this little house. And if you wanna follow along, you can either just screenshot what you see in this video, or I'll also leave the links to them, but the ones out on Vectezy are high-res images. So it'll work quite a bit different if you were to try to image trace them or something. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a camera. I'll just click and drag that onto my canvas. I'll hit Z on my keyboard to zoom in. When we do that, we can see the pixelation. This isn't something we could use to print as is. So now I'm gonna hit F7 to bring up my layers panel. I'm going to start a new layer, and then I'm going to lock this layer, layer number one. Now make sure I'm clicked on layer two, and we can get started just drawing the pieces of this. Usually when I'm starting a project like this, I'll try image trace just to see how it looks. As you can see, it is not great, and there's probably not a lot we could do to improve this. So I'm just gonna hit undo, Command Z or Control Z to get back to where I was. And I'm gonna lock this layer now. I'll get on layer two, and now we can just start drawing. So I'll hit M on my keyboard to get my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to click and drag and hold shift to make a perfect rectangle. That looks pretty good. I'll hit D on my keyboard to get a white fill and a black outline. And then I don't actually want a white fill, so I'll get rid of that. Now I'll hit R on my keyboard to get to my rotate tool. I'll just click and drag until it's about right. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to um, line it up pretty well with this. If your arrow keys are moving things too far, you can hit Command K or Control K and change your increment right here. I always have it at 0.5 or one point sometimes, but 0.7 also works pretty good. So you can increase it to get your arrow keys to move everything further or not as far. We'll say, okay. I'm going to hit I on my keyboard to get to my eyedropper tool. And as you can see, I've still got this piece selected. Now I'm going to hit A to make my live corners available. If you're on CS6 or older, you won't have these little round corners, but you should have corners right up here. By the way, if you're not seeing this bar at the top, you can come up here to window and go to control right here. And all of these other panels are also available in window. With our direct selection tool selected, I'm just gonna grab that corner and pull it in like this until it matches our logo's corners. Then I'll hit I to bring up the eyedropper tool. And now I can just click this in here to match that purple color. And that'll change my square to purple. Now I'm gonna copy this with Command C or Control C and hide it with Command 3 or Control 3. And then I'm gonna paste in front with Command F or Control F. I'm gonna hit Shift X to switch the fill in the stroke. So now I just have a purple stroke. And I'm still on my eyedropper tool. Now I'm going to use this color here. So I'll just click on that. So now I have a pink square on top of a purple square, and the purple square is hidden, but they're exactly on top of each other. And now I'm going to hide this one with Command-3 or Control-3. Now I'll hit P to get my pen tool, and I'm just gonna draw that line right in here. So I'll click right out here, and then I'll just make it go right down the center of that white area. Then I'll hit D on my keyboard to give me a white fill and black outline, 
and then I'm going to get rid of my white fill. So we'll do that. Then I'll hit Command F10, and that'll bring my stroke up. Now, as I said before, that'll also be under Window. Okay, so let's increase the weight of this. I've highlighted it. I'm just using my up and down arrow keys to make the stroke bigger or smaller. And this looks just about right. So because this is just a line, we need to expand it so that it becomes like a shape. It goes all the way out to both parts of the black area. So I'm gonna hit Command E or Control E to expand it. That's also under Object Expand right here. And now you can see we have a closed shape. Okay, so now let's bring back our pink and purple pieces. I'm going to go to Object, Show All. You can also do Option, Command 3, Alt, Control 3 on PC. I'm actually going to need another copy of this black bar. We want one for the pink and we want one for the purple. So I'm gonna copy that and then paste in front with Command F or Control F. Okay, and then I'm gonna hold Shift and select the pink. Now I'm gonna hit Shift M to get to my Shape Builder tool, which is right over here. If I hold Option while I'm using this tool, we can delete parts that we drag over. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just hold Option or Alt and drag over these, and then drag over that one and that one. So now all we have left is this pink side. I'll get back on my Selection tool and I'm going to select the purple this time. Hold Shift and select the black and then hit Shift M to get back on my Shape Builder tool. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll hold Option, and this time we're going to delete these things over here. So I'll hold Option or Alt and just drag over those and that one. So now we have both pieces of our square. I'm going to Command 3 or Control 3 to hide that. So we're done with these two sections. Now I want to draw the camera, so I'll hit M to get my rectangle tool. I'll just draw a box right here. I'm going to hit D to get a white fill and black outline, and then I'll hit my question mark or backslash key to get rid of my white fill. And then I'll hit A to get my direct selection tool. Then I'll get on these nodes and pull them in like before. Okay, so that matches up pretty nicely. I'm also going to do the same thing up here. I'll hit M to get my rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag all the way out to here. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit by hitting Z on my keyboard. Um, I'm going to hit Command Y or Control Y. I do this to select things a little easier. So I'm going to hit A, and I'm just going to select these two points right here. And then I'm going to hit Command Y or Control Y to get back out. Now I'll hit S, which is my scale tool, and I'm just going to bring these in like this. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I need these circles, so I'll click L on my keyboard to get to my circle tool, which is right over here. And I'll click right in the middle of all the circles. I'll hold Shift and Option and just drag. Option will resize from the center and Shift will keep it proportional, okay? Now I'll get my appearance panel up and I'm just going to use my eyedropper tool by hitting I on my keyboard right over here and click on this purple color. And then I want these two to be parts of this circle, and we can set that up here in the appearance panel. So I've got a fill, you can see that right here, and then I want a stroke behind it. I'll just click that stroke and pull it underneath the fill, and then we'll change the color to, I'm going to make it green so you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to highlight the stroke weight. I'll hold shift and hit my up and down arrows. Shift will make it jump really fast, and then I let off shift if I'm pretty close. So this looks pretty good. Now we can duplicate this stroke by holding Option or Alt and just clicking and dragging. And then I'm going to do the same thing. We'll just choose some other color. I'm going to hold shift and use my up arrows, and then let off and continue to resize that. Okay, so now we can go ahead and change the color. We want this stroke to be purple, so I'm going to hit I on my keyboard to get my eyedropper. I'll hold shift and just click this out here, and you can see that it changed just that outer one. And we want our stroke, the green stroke, to actually be white, so I can come over here to color and click that. 
Okay, and then we have this little piece right here. So I'm going to hit M on my keyboard to get to my rectangle tool. I'll just click and drag a shape roughly that size. You can see it's using the same appearance and we don't really want that. So I'm going to come over here to the fly out and choose clear appearance. Now I can use my eyedropper tool, which is I on your keyboard to select this same purple color. And I think I'll hit A and bring in these corners a little. It's hard to tell by the low res image, but I have a feeling those are rounded corners too. Now I'll hit V and select both pieces of the camera here. And I'll hit Shift M to get back on my Shape Builder tool. Now if you don't hold Option or Alt, you can just click and drag through all the pieces and it'll combine them. Now I think I want these up here to be curved a little bit, so I'm going to hit A to get my direct selection. I'm going to click right on each of those. And then I'll use my corner widgets to pull that down a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to unhide everything. So I'll hit Option Command 3 or Alt Control 3. You can also go to Object and Show All right here. Okay, so it looks like I need to change my camera to a fill, a white fill. So I'll do that. I'll also get rid of that stroke. I'm going to zoom out with Command minus or Control minus, and then I'll unlock my lower layer. I'll click on this and just drag it away to see how close it is. Okay, I did forget my little highlights, so I'm going to undo. I'm going to lock that layer again. I'll select everything on this top layer and hide it with Command 3. And now I'll go in and I'll hit L on my keyboard to get my circle tool and I'll just draw these in. I'm holding shift and option so I can resize proportionally from the center. Okay, and that should do it. I'll unhide all, object, show all right here. Now let's see how it looks. I'm going to unlock the lower layer, pull it away, and it is pretty close. I think this line right here is a little bit too thick. So that's something to improve on, but you get the idea. With all of these logos, we'll actually want to use Illustrator's tools to recreate them. Now, for the text part, it's never a great idea to try to redraw text. It is just very, very hard to do to make it look right. So what I always do is I take a screenshot of it, and then I go out to sites like What the Font, and here you can upload your own image. We'll pick the one that I just created. Now this site does have a lot of ads, but um, it's pretty useful. So I'm going to click here to identify this and it's found us a lot of matches. Now I don't see one right off the bat that is the same, but okay. I think it might be this one. So it is RB number 3.1 extra bold and we could buy it here. It does look like the A is a little different though. I usually just look at the really distinctive letters like the G. See how these G's are so very different. All the P's are pretty similar, but a G will really tell you if that's the right font. So I think this one is the closest one. Actually, probably the first thing you should do is check with the client just on the off chance that they know that font. But if they don't, you could ask them to purchase this font so that they could use it with their new vector logo. And then I would do the same down here. I think this font is Montserrat. It really looks very familiar. Let's see. If it's not, it's very, very close. So that is my process for recreating logos for clients. Okay, so there's one last step that I would do with this logo. I would just select the pieces and then I go ahead and get the text typed out here and make sure it's all spaced correctly. If we hit command Y right now, you can see that it doesn't look the same. We want it to kind of look just like this with just these shapes. So I need to expand, expand appearance, and then pathfinder divide. So I'm going to come up here to object with it selected, by the way, go to expand appearance, object, expand, and then do fill and stroke and say, okay. And that kind of breaks out all of the little strokes and everything into shapes. Now we can come down here to Pathfinder and divide. And now I'm going to hit Y on my keyboard and that'll give me the magic wand tool. If I select this purple color, it'll select all the purple pieces and then I can unite those. I'm going to hide all the purple pieces with command three. I'll select the pink pieces. It looks like just that one. I'll unite those. 
hide that with command three. And then I'll select all the white pieces. Okay, and then we'll go to Pathfinder Unite. Actually, we'll just delete those because they are non-existent in this logo. Now we'll go to Object and Show All. And now we, if we hit Command Y or Control Y, we have just the pieces we need, which are the purple and the pink pieces. Okay, so let's get our next logo. I'm going to go to File, Place, and then I'm going to choose the I logo. We'll place that. Now I placed this on the second layer, so I'm going to unlock the first layer. And I'm just, with this selected, I'm just going to come over here to this dot, which shows that it's on layer two. Grab that dot and pull it down here to layer one, and then lock this layer. Okay, so let's zoom in on this one by hitting Z on our keyboard and drawing a box. And for this, for something like this, I would probably just use a stroke or a few different strokes. So I'll get back on my unlocked layer and I'll hit P on my keyboard to get to my pen tool. And I'm just going to click right here in the middle of that line. I'm going to click right up here and drag that until my center line looks about equally spaced like this. I'll click on my last anchor point. And we'll click and drag until it looks pretty good. I'll click down here. Now you'll notice that I've got a white fill here. So let's hit D to get a white fill and black outline. I'll get rid of my white fill. So I just have a black outline now. Click back on this one. And I'm going to go right here and just click and drag to get that to be kind of centered like before. And then right that looks pretty good. Okay. Now this shape is actually repeated right here. So I'm just going to copy that and paste in front. Then I'm going to hit E on my keyboard to get my free transform. And I'm going to rotate this around like this. Then I'll get on my selection tool by hitting V and I'll just click and drag it right down here. Okay. And that looks pretty good. I might need to move this point over a little bit. So I'll hit a on my keyboard, click on that and just, I can use my arrow keys to move it a little bit. So it's a little more centered in the space. And then I've got this circle. So I'll hit L, I'll get right in the very middle. I'll click and drag and hold shift and option to draw from the center. I want it to go right about to those two other lines. So I'm going to move it down just a little bit to center it. Okay. Now I'll select all of those lines and I'm going to make them quite a lot bigger. I'll get in my stroke panel. I'll highlight the weight and then I'll use my arrow keys to make this quite a lot bigger. Okay. That looks good. Now you'll see the angle is a little bit different right here. I'm going to go ahead and extend this a little bit past so we can just cut that piece off and I'll do the same over here. I'm using my a tool or my direct selection tool to do that. Okay. And then I'm going to find these two fonts. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this. I'll go back out to what the font, and then I'm going to upload that image, which is right here. We'll open that and then I'll click on this blue button. Okay. It looks like we have a few that are similar. I'm liking this one, the gimbal, the gimbal grotesque, the S looks really similar and the R is somewhat similar. Okay. But all of these fonts are anywhere from 19 to $35. And of course I'm not going to buy those. Um, I'm just going to find a different font that looks kind of similar. I've hit T on my keyboard to get my text tool and I just clicked once and I'll type visioner. Um, I'm going to change this to Montserrat bold and I'm only doing this so you can see my process on this to kind of try to match this up. So in this case, um, I'm going to make it yellow. So I would just type it out like this and then you can see the eye is a little bit off. So I'm going to hold alt or option and just move that over a little bit and just move all of the pieces to where they fit over what's currently there. Maybe 
Actually, uh, Montserrat is pretty close. It's not perfect, but that's my process um, once I have the actual font. Um, okay, so let's get our colors in here. I'm gonna move this down and I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard to get my eyedropper tool and then just sample this blue color. So that is that one. So we'll move that back up. And then I'm gonna type slogan goes here. I'm gonna get back on my selection tool and I'll make this one 10 point. Looks like it's a little bit bigger than that. I've got, I'm on my V tool, my selection tool right now. I'm gonna get it about the right height and then I'll hold Alt or Option and uh, use my right arrow to space this out so it's about the same. And then we could go through and get in between letters and then hold Alt or Option and use my arrow keys to make it all look the same. Looks like there wasn't much space in between these words. Okay, then I'll move it away. I'll hit I on my keyboard and then just sample that green color. And then I'll move it back up. For the I, I'm going to select it and then I'm going to expand this. Right now we only have a stroke and we want these to be shapes. So I'm gonna to go to object, expand, and fill and stroke. We'll say okay. And now I'm gonna zoom in with my Z tool. This is going a little bit outside the line. I'm hitting Command Y or Control Y to see a little more clearly what's going on with my logo. So I'm going to get on my group selection tool, which is right here. I'll select this and then I'll hit V or E to get my uh, bounding box up. And I'm just going to pull this in holding Shift and Option or Shift and Alt on a PC. Then I'll hit Command Y or Control Y again. Now these aren't going outside that. Okay, so now I'm gonna select all these pieces and then I'm gonna combine them with Pathfinder Unite. I'm gonna knock my opacity down to about 30 so now we can see the changes we need to make. Everything looks really good except this angle right here. So what I'm going to do is hit P on my keyboard. I'm going to just draw right across that. And then I'm gonna come over here and draw with the pen tool a little area to cut off that edge. So now we'll select all of these things and then I'm gonna hit Shift M on my keyboard to get my shape builder, which is right here. I'll hold Option and just drag across those pieces. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna bump my opacity back up to 100. Okay, I'm gonna move this away. And it looks like we have just a simple uh, right to left gradient. So I'm gonna get that effect by opening my gradient window, window gradient, and then getting on my gradient tool here, I'm gonna click the gradient slider, which will give me a white to black gradient. And then I can double click here. I can get on my color picker and just choose this blue color. I'll double click on this side and I'll get on my color picker and choose this green color. Oh, but I've switched them, haven't I? So we can come over here to the gradient panel and just reverse the gradient. And we can also move this slider to get a little more blue on this side if we want to, to, to make it match. Then I'll just move it back over on top. And then we can hide our other layer and you can see we've got a nice clean vector. I'm gonna unlock and pull this one out to see what we could have changed. I think we're pretty close on this. The font here, the R is different. Obviously we knew that because we didn't want to buy the real font. Okay, so now let's place our third logo. I'm just gonna hit Shift Option Command P or Shift Alt Control P, and I'm gonna to get to the house logo. So I'm just gonna place this one in, and this one's an easier one, I think. Um, it's on the correct layer. If it's not, you can just drag the little box to the low res layer and lock it. I'll get back on layer two, and now I'm gonna hit L on my keyboard. That will get me to the circle tool. I'll just click here and drag until I get a full circle. I'm holding shift and option so I get 
a proportional resize from the middle circle. And I'll hit D to get a white fill and a black outline. I'm going to get rid of my white fill. And now I'll move this down. And I'm going to just change this to that orange color now. So I'll hit I on my keyboard and just click that orange. And then I'm going to hide this with Command 3 or Control 3. Okay, so next I'm going to work on the black parts of this. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard. I'll get right on the edge of this black area. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hold Shift to get a straight up and down part right here. This one could probably go up a little bit, so I hit A on my keyboard. I'm just clicking that uh, anchor point, and then I'll just move it up with my arrows. And I'm going to hit Shift X so I can switch that fill and stroke. Then I'm just going to come down here like this. I don't need to draw this part of the circle because I actually already have that right here. I'll click here and get this part though. Okay, so we've got the black part. I'm going to just change that to green. And it looks like if I zoom in, I might be able to use some pieces of this to create this. In fact, I might want to do that. I think I'm going to move this down a little bit. I'm going to click right on this anchor point, hold shift and click this anchor point. And then I'm going to copy, click off. I'm going to click this one and then hide it with object hide. And then I'll paste in front with command F or control F. So I've just pasted those two anchor points, but when I do that, it brings with them the two paths that are connected to them. I'm going to get on my selection tool and just move this one up. Then I'll get on my A tool, which is my direct selection, click right on this anchor point and bring it over here like this. I'll do the same with this piece. I can use my A tool since I have a fill on it. I'll move it up. It's nice to do that because you get exactly the same angles as what you created below. If I hit Command Y or Control Y, you can see the bottom of these is not a completed path. So I want to go ahead and do that. I'll hit Command Y or Control Y to get back. And I'll hit Command J to complete that. You can also get on your pen tool and just click here and then click here to complete that path. Now I'm going to come over here. I'll just hit Command J or Control J to join those. And um, it should do the same thing. Now I'll select this one and this one, and I'll come down here to Pathfinder and unite these. Then I'll hit M on my keyboard. I'm going to draw a rectangle right up here, so I'll click and drag. I'm going to drag the other rectangle right here. I wanted to make sure it's overlapping my triangles. Then I'll hold Shift and select all the pieces, and then Pathfinder unite them. Now I'm going to unhide all, so I'll go to Object, uh, Show All. And now we have a lot of different pieces. So I'm going to bring this lower piece to the top with shift command right bracket or shift control right bracket on a PC. And this one's going to be black. I'm going to get on my stroke and just get rid of that. Now with the green, we're going to want to make that white. So I'll get rid of my outline. I'm going to click on the green and make it white. Okay, now we're almost there. I'm going to unlock my lower layer and I'm just going to pull a copy over here to see what we need to do still. Okay, one thing that I see is that this piece needs white. I'm going to hit N on my keyboard, and I'm just going to start drawing here. I'm going to change that path so it goes below here. You have to be right on the path, and then you have to end up right on that same path going the same direction. So now that's filled in with white. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to click here and make it fill in with white there. And then it looks like we need to do that right here too. So I'll click and I come down here and end up on the same path going the same direction. Okay, so we have all the white pieces done like that. Now we need the windows. I'm going to lock that layer again. I'll select all these pieces and hide them. And then I'll zoom in. I'll hit M to get my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to click and drag and make little rectangles. I'm holding Option and making a copy that way, or Alt on a PC. And these look pretty good. I'm going to group those with Command G. Then I'll hold Option or Alt and make another copy over here and resize those. Now I'll show all. I'm going to hit Option Command 3. That's Alt Control 3 on a PC. 
Now I'm almost done. I just need to fill this part with black. So I'm going to make a copy of it. If I do that though, it'll change this to black up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these and then I'm going to go to my shape builder here and drag across both so that these turn black and these two need to be connected and so do these. Okay, so we're almost done. I really only want two pieces, the orange and the black, and I need to get rid of all the white. So I'm going to select it all. I'll come down here to Pathfinder and divide it. Now I can use my magic wand and get all the orange, unite it, and hide it. I'll do the same thing with the white. I've got all the little white pieces, and I'm just going to throw those away. I don't want those to show up at all. Then I'll do the same thing with the black, and I'll come over here and unite those two. So now if I unhide all with Option Command 3 or Alt Control 3, we'll unlock the layer and move it out of the way. You can see we've got a nice high res version of this design now. So that's it. Three different low res logos into nice vector images. Now I realize that working with the Pathfinder, like on this one down here, can get really confusing. But if that confuses you, you just find a way that works for you. All right, if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. Thank you.